I hope your first exercise sparked lots of new ideas and mental connections. It can be interesting to push yourself to consider fresh angles on a problem you might think you already know very well. In our context map in the previous exercise, we decided to consider our problem from the entrepreneur's perspective. What makes entrepreneurs more resilient? It was clear that entrepreneurs are less vulnerable to shocks when they have the safety net of an ecosystem of various types of formal and informal support. Of course, many government departments and organizations have been working to encourage and support entrepreneurship for years. And over the years, our societies have had to deal with various economic and political changes. Our responses to these changes have shaped the context that we're working in now. You can also learn from the mistakes and the successes of the past to respond better in the future. You may even find potential partners or resources that you can use for the solution you're developing today. In the next exercise, we're going to create a progression curve. Watch a quick version of how I do it, and then take an hour or so to make one yourself. Now, let's do some time traveling. We're going to draw a progression curve. Here it is. And with this curve, because I'm South African, I'm exploring the context, history and trends of the local entrepreneurial system. So I'm going to write here ecosystem, just to keep me on track with what it is I'm exploring here. Okay, so a progression curve looks a little bit like a path up a hill. This is where we are today. But where did we start? Well, you can go back as far as you like. I've done progression curves that go all the way back to ideas from Greek philosophers. But today, and for this context, I'm going to start in 1999. 1999 was when South Africa's first tech startup incubator, the Bandwidth Barn, was established in Cape Town. And that was really important for our entrepreneurial ecosystem. So what happened next? Uh, well, in this context and in South Africa, a very important stimulator of small business activity has been black economic empowerment. Um, so that sees larger businesses and governments incentivized to procure from black-owned businesses, really important. And the first legislation for BEE was passed in 2003. And then the broad-based triple BEE codes, those were published in 2007. Let's put that over here. So as you can see, we are taking a little trip through history. And these codes have been really, really important in uh, getting corporates particularly to procure from small businesses. Right, we're looking at transformation and we're looking at the bandwidth barn and taking it kind of through there. We know that the bandwidth barn launched a satellite facility for entrepreneurs in the township of Kailiche in 2015. Let's put 2015 here. And we'll call that Bandwidth Barn Kyalicha. Right, so bandwidth barns, these bandwidth barns are spaces where very early stage businesses can get space for offices and some training. And this reminds me of the context map where we spoke about accelerators. Accelerators are intensive programs for high growth businesses that often also offer seed funding. Okay, accelerators. I think I'm going to do this in a different color, um, which you don't have to do if you're doing this exercise. I think it's just going to help me a little bit with my thinking and to make things clearer. And I'm, so I'm going to start thinking about accelerators, and I'm going to put uh, the first South African one that I can think of, um, and that was Google Ubono, and that was in 2010. Google Ubono. Right, and then as we come up to today, I can think of a bunch more from the past few years. So uh, there was FinTech focused Alpha Code, which was also 2015. Uh, 
there is EdTech focused in Genie. Uh, and in Genie was 2017, if I'm not mistaken, that that was launched. And then quite recently, uh, 2019, uh, there was biotech focused one bio. So we're going to say bio, one bio. Okay, so quite a lot of activities lately. Um, and it looks like the ecosystem is recognizing more and more that entrepreneurs need structured support uh, to make the most of funding opportunities. That's what I see coming through here. Um, since finance came up on the context map as well, let's keep following the money. After all, that's what entrepreneurs always do. So let me think about uh, where the funding's coming from. Well, the South African Venture Capital Association was founded before this progression curve starts in 1998. But they published their first report on venture capital investment trends in 2013. So that's round about here. Okay, Savka report. This is all about how early stage investors are investing. So they did one in 2013, um, and then there were big gaps between the reports in the beginning. Um, but in the last uh, sort of three years, they've done a report every year. So here we got a SAFCA report. I'm just going to write here SAFCA in 2017. There was another SAFCA report in 2018, and another one in 2019. Right. So that is showing me that since there's been one every year for the past three years, there's increased activity and interest in the early stage investing space. Um, that's definitely a trend. Uh, what else did I pick up in my context maps? A little bit about networks. Uh, let's explore that networks aspect. Well, where I am in Cape Town, in South Africa, Startup Grind is one of the popular networking events in our ecosystem. So I looked it up on the internet, and I see it was started in 2013, over here. Let's do it with our thick pen so you can see here. 2013, also in 2013, started to have more networking events with ones like Startup Grind. Okay, and you can see it's starting to get quite busy. There's definitely a lot more activity coming up here. Um, and so the way that I'm filling this in is I'm just uh, squeezing it in and making space and kind of seeing what comes up as I start to draw this out. Uh, the, another popular one that takes place in both Johannesburg and Cape Town is Heavy Chef. And Heavy Chef only started quite recently. Yeah, 2017 was Heavy Chef. Um, and I suppose I could name plenty more networking events that have been happening since then. So that's definitely a growing trend, um, even though a lot of them are now happening online. Yeah, let me just make a little note there. We're moving online with a lot of these networking events now. Okay, I think I've got something really interesting happening here, but let's go back to here. Bandwidth Barn Kaya who else is doing entrepreneurial mentorship and training in township contexts? What about R Labs? R Labs started here in 2009, was R Labs. And they run in the Western Cape only. Um, but then there's M Labs. Uh, yeah, a little bit confusing, but there we go. M Labs, I know that they are all over the country in places even like Kimberley. Um, and they were started the next, the following year, 2010, M-Labs. So I'm starting to see that there's this trend coming in here of spreading out of this, the big centers like Johannesburg and Cape Town in the South African context, and more and more small little hubs and labs around the country. Um, I think there must be an increasing demand for entrepreneurial services in different places around the country. Okay, so that's how you start your progression curve. You can do some research online. You can ask around for some more information to build out your map from the past to the present. So start with what you know and then just see how much more you can start to pack in. 
You can make it really detailed if you like, or you can choose parts of your progression curve, for example, this pink bit here, this uh, early stage investing theme, and then you create a new progression curve to explore that topic in more depth. So I suggest you get going on the exercise and enjoy seeing what you learn about the history and context of your problem statement.